welcome back to another episode of Dude is Drinking Beer. My name is Josh. My name is a victim. <laughs> and welcome back to... Josh keeps shitting his pants. <laughs> and he just did it again. And now it's going through my shirt. Those are the worst farts I've ever smelled in my life. They do smell pretty bad, but that's besides the point. Because it's a new day. It's a new Monday. I'm gonna throw up. I have a glass of ice. We're gonna get to that in a sec. But today's, uh, if you want to be in the now, today's random. Oh, that's uh, speaking of buttholes. Josh is <laughs> leaking. Today's random piece. Dude, of, <laughs> I didn't do anything it again. Smells so bad. <laughs> it's still the old one. Today's random piece of information is, is that uh, fan on? Can we turn the fan on? I'm not that even fa- That fan is on. Yes, that one is on too. Can we make it blow your fucking way? <laughs> <laughs> no, just deal with it. Wear your mask. No, that's awful, bro. Today's, if you want to be in the know, today's piece of information is smiling actually boosts your immune system. So, And farting prevents colon cancer. Quit being so crabby. May you live in peace. Quit being so crabby underneath there. Oh my god. Uh, we don't have a beer sponsor today, so if you guys want to buy us literally anything to drink, head on over to our website, <sighs> www.tutusdrinking.beer. Uh, something we introduced last episode with Raul is that we are going to start um, drinking some hard liquor. Whiskey. Yeah. So in this case, we're drinking whiskey. Uh, either today we're going to sip it. La- uh, last week we shot it. So we're just uh, something to just keep us loose uh, and just trying new things. Yeah. We're still small. Uh, of course, you have your single art- artisanal ice cube. I don't know how much to put. Just enough to. Just enough to nip on. That's perfect. Here, you do yourself. And we're drinking Buffalo Trace. And you want about just the size of a shot. Well, we could have measured that out then. Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, essentially, it's we're either, we're either going to take a shot or we're going we're gonna to sip a shot. But this is good sipping whiskey, from what I hear on all the reviews. And uh, We don't know for sure. I just really wanted to sip on some whiskey. Well. And now I'm dying in a <laughs> cloud of gas. <laughs> I didn't know you were Jewish. Whew. It's nice. It's nice, spicy. Not bad. Almost kind of like a rum. Yeah, I feel like I got hair on my tongue. You probably do. Just burning all the fucking hairs off your face with the gas in the room. Okay, these gas jokes are getting old. Yeah. But stop farting. <laughs> Give me a warning. Keep it moving. Uh, no warnings. That's just, it falls out. My butthole's too loose. Jesus Christ. Um, so today I wanted to talk specific. Well, do you have any? No, no, no. Go ahead. I'm just pulling up my, my okay. notes. Uh, I have no notes, but I have an idea that I want to talk about. Um, because I've been recently, the last few nights, <clears throat> I've been going back and watching slash listening to old music that I wouldn't have listened to, but that was around. Uh, in my early era of metal music discovery and the genre of post-hardcore. Uh, specifically, one song I was listening to uh, was called Sick Stickly by Attack Attack. And if you were any sort of uh, teenager or high schooler... Any sort. ...who were kind of like hated the world and yourself and were a little bit depressy. <clears throat> A little bit depressing. A little bit depressing. You weren't quite fully emo, but you were just like, eh. To the ones who didn't dive into the emo phase. Yeah. And they dipped a toe in. Scene is a thing. You all know who Attack Attack is. Those those people. Yeah. Um, I never listened to Attack Attack up until Caleb Shomo took over at the very end. But it's just a song that I've been going back to and watching the music video. And seeing these people dress a certain way, doing a certain thing, and all of these, like, 2006 music videos, it's like, damn, if I got into it, like, two years earlier, I could have been that. Like, I could have dressed le- that certain way. Cause it sounds like you regret not doing it. Is that what I'm getting I, at? No. You wanted to be a little more seen? Oh, God, no. No. <clears throat> but it... So where essentially where I'm going with this is the whole uh, personality development and like how you get like how you 
develop and create your own personality. A lot of people get it from music. Uh, it's like, oh, it's what you listen to. Like, if I listen to metal, I'm going to wear all black and have long hair. You fall into, like, essentially the stereotypes. But then you just kind of tinker it well, here you, and there. You, you come into a community, you know. Yeah. The stereotypes are obviously there, but it's like you, you do that because you want to be seen and have someone be like, hey, you like metal. And you're like, yeah, it's the same reason why people wear Nirvana shirts, I think. They're all posers. Most of them are, yeah. But like, name I, name name the top three Nirvana songs. Smells like Teen Spirit. That's it. That's all I know. But I was never that skinny, pale kid with snake bites or stretched you ears. Could have been. I could have been if I was there <coughs> a year or two early. A year or two earlier. Probably would have had lid piercings, assuming my parents wouldn't let me, so I'd have to do it behind their back, because it'd be edgy. Just do it anyway. Yeah. And they'd be like, no, take those out, and be like, I You don't you know my life! It's not a phase, Mom. <laughs> totally is, because all those people nowadays look rough. Most of them are just doing heroin. Probably. <laughs> so, I really, I just kind of want to dive into what makes us how our personalities have changed you and me yeah just, oh shit yeah I mean, i'm not talking to them i was the, i thought we were just gonna discuss the idea of it i didn't know we were actually gonna go fucking that too all yeah. in on ourselves yeah it, it's damn okay self-reflection is good i guess but because i mean no one's been the same person for ever no Granted, but, like at your core sure but yeah i was gonna say at a certain point change. i really feel like People don't change, but they do change, but they people don't change. Slightly change. They just get better at being who they are. Yeah. Because, I mean, you find certain things that work for you, and then yeah. shit doesn't work. You try new stuff. Mm -hmm. But your main personality, like, how did you get that? Like, what would you... How would you describe your personality? My for, personality? First of all, yes. Uh, reserved. Uh... Uh, that's the weird thing because I'm I'm a little torn because I know how people perceive you and then tell how me you they perceive, perceive me. So, um, you're the I, asshole. Yeah, I know I'm the asshole. I'm the loud one, but it's really not. It's not me. I feel like I was kind of put there or placed there. But I think if you know, <clears throat> you know me. You talk to anyone. They they might say I'm the asshole, but they don't think I'm like outgoing at all. It's not like an outgoing kind of asshole thing. It's like a He's just loud when we're talking at like a bar or something, or uh, I talk a lot, or I say something direct, and that's the asshole side. So how do you perceive yourself? Um, <clears throat> you said reserved. Yeah. Pretty, pretty quiet, I guess. Asocial is a is a word we've. Uh, the correct usage. <clears throat> yeah, we've kind of come to terms with uh, saying, and um, I don't know. I I just um, I just love music, and music's always been there. It's really helped me kind of understand who I am and what I want to do. And uh, I think art. I'd say artistic. I'm an artistic person. I'm a creative person. Um. Um, I feel like we got enough from that. Yeah, like we got it. I'd say I'm pretty open-minded, but I also basis. at the same time know what I like. For sure. So let me ask you this: <coughs> So you you do you listen to fucking all different kinds of music? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like literally anything and everything, and it comes with your job. Mm -hmm. So you're mainly you like hip hop and whatnot. It's fair to say hip hop R and B. Uh, not R and B, so but just hip, -hop. hip hop, rap, uh, or hip hop and rap. Can you <laughs> alternative? Is, is hip hop and rap kind they, of? They are shared. Okay. Yeah, they're they're a shared genre. Yeah. Okay. So hip hop and Ben Folds. <laughs> that is, is that is actually the most accurate. Which is a spectrum. Which is a fucking spectrum. Because <clears throat> like for 
for those people who don't know, like, who is Ben Folds? Like, what does he do? Uh, ben Folds is um, a pianist. Uh, he grew up writing orchestras and uh, scores. How I perceive him as a non-funny Bo Burnham. <laughs> That's a great way to put it, too. And that's probably why I'm so keen to Bo Burnham, too, because I fucking love Bo Burnham. But, like, um, his lyrics uh, and his songs just feel so real and so personal and so deep. And um, I think that's kind of who I am. I'm, I'm very more romantic in the sense of, like, it's very me, 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 I, especially when it comes to art. And Ben Folds, all his songs are, like, I'm sad, I'm hurt, I'm alone, and it's like, that was kind of my emo scene phase, so it's like, when you listen to a lot of his stuff, it's like, people change on you, and all you can do is like, be be you, and uh, stick, to, stick to who you are, and let people change around you, mm-hmm. um, but uh, he's, he's a pianist, he's um, Ben Folds 5, Ben Folds, uh, if you don't know him now, you know, there's not much to say, if, just check him out if if you're interested. He's a, he's a fantastic artist. Because I know for a fact I've never heard of him until I met you. <clears throat> I've gotten that a lot. So, I mean, it's definitely one of those things that you learn from expanding your scope. Culture shock. So, with hip-hop and rap and Ben Folds. <laughs> when... I, I, I'll never <laughs> think that's not funny when you say those all together. It's like, so, Soft Kitties and the Holocaust. So, if you were to take all the elements that make Ben Folds music, Ben Folds music, and hip-hop and rap music, that kind of music, mm-hmm. and you, like, you ever seen, like, those, as just, like... And I made a Frankenstein baby of words. his music. It's just words on, like, on a paper, and you... Yeah, the, the some, word map. Some words are bigger. The biggest like, word is the most common referred to. Yeah, and you just pick and choose for To yourself. refer to Ben Folds... But to pick from those words that like were <laughs> describe Ben Folds hip hop rap, uh, and apply them to yourself, like that's a fun exercise. What elements of those would you say you've adopted in yourself? Um, <sighs> free thinking. Um, pretty rappy. I think so. Conscious rap, yeah. Um, say free thinking, um, but that, that that are shared between rap and music. No, just like I mean, uh, Ben folds. No, they don't have to be shared. It's just things that the can... big the big words that describe me for those genres. Yeah. Um, I want to say, just. Uh, Songs that are about I, you know, like the um, songs that are more personal, like imagine a club song, right? It's like, yeah, generic, but even like a rap song, it's like generically speaking, shake your ass, make money. I'm not a huge fan of uh, those kinds of songs. Objectifying people. I'd rather, women. I'd rather hear a song about like my struggle passion or struggle or overcoming adversity or something that's going to inspire me uh because when someone's saying i i i on a rap or me 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 on a song uh it makes it easy to relate to and it's typically a good story about who they are and what they've done to overcome something and i feel like i've had to overcome some pretty uh diverse challenges uh growing up and music is what helped me kind of gauge and find my footing uh, as a person uh, to overcome those challenges and at the very least uh, deal with those challenges and, and uh, coexist with them at times, you know? So you like it more centered on the <laughs> self? Yes, it's, it's, I, think it's, I think the word is romantic uh, style music. It's like a very me, me, me kind of thing. Selfish. Uh, I mean... And yeah, the the rap is selfish. It's super me. The songs are super me when it's Ben Folds because he's talking about himself. But it's relatable, and that's why I got in. That's why I like music. That's why I want to do music is so someone can like hear me relatable. Essentially, bitch and complain about my life or something I'm going through or you know anything I think, and then they'll be like, "Holy shit, I feel the same way." And uh, it won't be necessarily like about me. This is me. It's like I. 
I say this all the time, like I took something away from rap and music and I want to give it back. And I want people to be able to feel what I felt when I heard Ben Folds saying, it sucks to grow up. Or, um, yeah, it does. Yeah. But it's like, you know, like it was like one of the first songs I really cried to being like, holy shit in high school. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, if, if a rapper is, uh, like Childish Gambino, uh, his album camp is all about like his childhood and, you know, uh, the whole, the whole album essentially is getting to the point of this is a life lesson I've learned and this is what the album's about. And I learned something because no one, no one in my life um, was there to tell me these lessons. And I thought these were good, valuable lessons that uh, I applied to my life and I feel made me a better person. So if I could do that for someone else by talking about me and complaining about my shit uh, and then someone can <clears throat> see that as, oh, hey, this is a valid like outlet of like creativity and artistry and also i can like deal with my demons because uh i've seen people deal with their demons through it because that's how i feel i want to keep that i want to keep that door open that i felt was open for me (coughs) okay so you are reserved and you so you're you're reserved i'm a reserved romantic who is open-minded, free-thinking, and has di- diverse tastes in music. And that's your current personality. I believe so, yeah. Where, how would you say, like, do you think you'd keep that for almost ever? Or do you think, like, I mean, granted, it's really hard to say, like, I'm going to change in five years. Well, like, here, here's... I'm going to drop this. And <clears throat> here's my thing on the, the whole theory of, like, personality, right? Because it's like... I, I personally believe you're born who you are. And then, like I said earlier, you just get better at it. So I, I believe I was born at the age of zero with this mindset. But it's like one of those things like life is going to happen to you and everyone's life is different. So it's just whether or not you kind of get on the track that like I also love superhero movies. And I remember thinking in middle school and high school like people who were super into superhero movies and anime are fucking weebs they're like losers dude i remember thinking that and being like i'll never be losers like them <clears throat> you may like those things but you haven't adopted those things into your personality what do you mean like i haven't been to comic con i haven't gotten the long hair like a like a emo or scene kid would or what G- like generally <coughs> stereotypes are bad. i'm multicultured sure Stereotypes are bad, but they're also really good at describing things. Mm-hmm. Like the average person who does go to like Comic Con probably doesn't wear deodorant and they smell bad, <laughs> and they live with their in their mom's basement, have gross neck beards. They're always leaving uh, poor reviews on Yelp and 4chan. Yeah, so I mean, like we all hear like this person is a keyboard warrior. Uh, redditor and you can kind of like oh this person's obese and has a fedora and a greasy ponytail it's like i understand the the stereotype yeah so like stereotypes if i were to say like if you can think of like just a fucking person who likes superheroes and comic books you probably have a person in mind whether <laughs> david they, maybe yeah, sure whether they're real or not it's like you have this idea david's pretty real i know i'm just i'm just saying like, if you were to say a stereotype and be like, okay, mm-hmm. I have th- what this person looks like in my head. They have these color eyes. They're this ha- this, this, this hard. T- <laughs> they're this tall. There's weight. Like, boom, boom, boom. Like, you mm-hmm. can build this person in an instant. Yeah, it's like profiling like police. So David, mm-hmm. from at least I've met him a solid twice in person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say he's pretty goofy. Yeah. And um, he kind of just, he knows how to work a room. Rambunctious. Sure. Good talker. Yeah, I'd say he's pretty goofy and he can work a room. Mm-hmm. Uh, and something I'd associate with comics is goofy. And I mean, I just, yeah. So I don't think that, sure, you may like. You don't think I'm goofy enough to be in that stereotype. I mean, that's just one of the big words on the map. But sure. I'm I, not saying that yeah. you can't be a part of that stereotype, mm-hmm. but I don't think you've adopted elements of comic books or superheroes into your personality i think it's one of the outliers that you may like this and it doesn't Mm -hmm. look like you would okay um 
So then, like, if you look, what at would me, be the big word you assign to me? <clears throat> I never thought about that, but I just, well, fucking, I never thought about any of this. So. I just asked the question. Here we go. I'm not used to being asked. <clears throat> How about you put it in a uh, question form? What is an asshole? Ding. What What does it mean to be reserved? Um, not very social. Very See, anxious I, around. I would disagree. I would say to be more reserved is just be. I mean, sure, quiet, but it's also like you're always you're not afraid of anything really if you're reserved like you you know what's going on and you're just kind of okay i got this i'm not going to worry about anything and you're always like you always have like something in your back pocket me no just to be reserved oh i think we just define the word reserved then differently yeah that's what that's what i said yeah okay no i don't i don't think you're you're very just like we're going we're going like i don't think you always have something in your back pocket it depends, like, on what you're doing, though. Like, if you're... Let me give you an example, right? So, here's what I think of when I when I say reserved, right? We're at Lamplighter, and Ryan's like, you want to play some pool? You want to play some pinball? I'm like, let's do pinball first. I don't think that's, like, being like, this is what we're doing. It's just, like, it's like, oh, well, we have these two options, and, like, I'm not going to go talk to strangers and make friends and, like, you know... You don't have to talk to anyone playing pool. I know, but it, it has happened, but... um. I'm just saying, like, I'm not, like, I've seen people who are um, extroverts, and I'm rather yes, introverted. Exist. I think introverted would be a good word for me, too, yep. throw that on the list, but uh, I'm definitely not an extrovert, but um, I don't know. I just, I know what I like, and when people ask me what I like, I've learned to just tell the truth and be like, this is what I like, and if, if you ask me what to do, if you ask me what I want to eat, and I know what I want to eat, I'm going to say... Uh, I don't know. Cronies. Or I'm going to say we should do this, you know? Um, but I, I learned that because of the teen center being around a bunch of indecisive little shitty kids. Um, and I'm talking about myself, of course. But basically, I remember sitting around and everyone's like, <clears throat> we can go to Little Caesars or we can go to McDonald's for lunch. And I was like, well, well there's also Carl's Jr. Can we do Carl's Jr.? I kind of want Carl's Jr. And everyone's like, all right, Carl's Jr. And for a long time, before that period of me being like, oh, there's also Carl's Jr., let's do Carl's Jr., or even just saying I want to try something new, it'd be like a lot of stupid asshole teens in middle school, myself included, being like, what do you want for lunch? I don't know. What do you want for lunch? I don't know. What do you want for lunch? I don't know. What do you want for lunch? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And it's just like... Just a loop. Yeah. And, and like, I, I, I got sick of that so quickly because I'm like, yo, like, are we going to do this or not? Like, it, it really felt like, should I get off the pot? So you're a leader. Um, I'm flattered that is the word that comes to mind. Uh, I've, I've been told uh, I have good leadership qualities, but I don't know if I would be... Like, anyone, anyone can be a leader. Yeah, but I mean, we're talking about like getting lunch and playing pinball at a bar. I don't think it's like... Would you say you make most of the decisions for our group and what we do? I mean, I would say so. Yeah, but you're, I, you're our group's leader. But I, but I also feel like I've gotten the other side of that too, where people have told me like, I don't consider what you guys think enough, and they're like, I've been told like, you don't do it democratically, and I was like, what? We also don't care. We are all very passive. Which, which you know, that's kind of, and that's, and here's the thing too. Like, I think people like that are the people who are like me, being like, I kind of want Carl's Jr., but the only two options that everyone else is thinking is little caesars and mcdonald's should i just say little caesars and mcdonald's and choose between them two i'm like no like why not carl's jr and if you're like like let's just get fish tacos they're like okay fucking now fish tacos is on the ballot you know mm. but i've but i've also been told uh i was not like democratic in like how we make decisions i remember it was like they're just like you just you just care about yourself and like that really fucking hurt me because I was like man like hey I don't and I feel like this person was just like probably selfish or like they were hurt because I did the thing where it's like what do you want and I knew what I wanted and I said it and then they wanted something else and they didn't speak up about it I feel like that was the instance for that case but um 
I don't know. It's it's weird. People are weird. People are weird. Um, you said, oh, hold on. We were talking about. <laughs> this is fun. It feels like an interview. This is my narcissism kicking in. I'm like, oh, I'm special. I'm dope. So you're a reserve leader narcissist. <laughs> I'm a little those bit are of a narcissist. Two of those don't go with the three. Two of those, yeah. So you're definitely. Well, I mean, you're interesting. Oh, well, the thing to is, to be a reserved leader, a reserved definitely is more second. As far as a reserved hand. leader goes, I. And, I, and I've said this to Ryan quite a few times over the, the past week. I'm like, mafia mentality. And what I mean by that is, like, being that, like, mob leader who's, like, got a war going on in his head. But he's like, sit down, have some whiskey, we'll smoke this cigar, and we're going to talk about peace. And if you can't get peace, then I'm ready to go to war. Kind of thing, you know? I remembered... So I said, if you were to look at you and what would you uh, like, what would you think this person does? And I was going to say like, well, if people look at me like they would never think that like hairstylist. I don't, I'm not a hairstylist. You look like a hairstylist. You, you, you could, you could work in like a salon or like a shopping mall. I would cut myself. <laughs> I know. I, I feel like most people who work in the mall cut themselves. Um, but like <sighs> if you were, if you were to look at me now, you would never Never probably think that I listened to Hannah Montana High School Musical and all Disney music Never. back in the day. It's just not it's not the persona that I put out and I've uh fine tuned and highly crafted my persona that I put out today. Yeah. How about your persona? Do you do you have I like, don't think I have a persona. I think I'm really you're, just you're a the blog. same you're the same with everybody? I try to be. Uh I'm different with some people. In the sense of, like, when DeAndre was here, I know my slang changed a little bit. Like, I'm conscious of that. But that's just because how we talked in high school. <clears throat> but um, I do try to be the same with everybody. I don't try to, like, I don't know, man. I, I feel like a, a good way to describe it is in middle school... I always had plain t-shirts. Yes, you, were a big, you were a big fan of uh, solid colors. I wasn't really a fan. It was just kind of what my dad bought me. But Big fan. Um, basically, it was like, get in, get out. If it fits, buy it. Who cares? And it was never like, we never went to like any like, we, we, we just go to like Target or like Kmart. And I remember seeing the logos on the shirts and being like, these aren't the logos the kids at school have. And all the other kids, the other poor kids... Uh, they'd have just plain tees of colors, like, from Pants Town. So I started doing that. And I was just like, I'll just buy a bunch of plain t-shirts with colors. And if they fit, they fit. Mm. It's whatever. <clears throat> and one day, my friend goes, Alec, you're so boring. You're just always wearing plain t-shirts. Like, who are you? And I was like, what? And he's just like, look at look at this guy. Like, he's got this shirt. Like, I, I know he's a skater. But, like, you're just a fucking plain bagel, dude. Like, you just... You, White bread. You, you can't tell... You, like, you can't... No one can look at you and just be like, oh, he is this this thing. And I feel like uh, I mean, I'm wearing an Aloha t-shirt and, like, jeans. Like, I don't think if you looked at me, you'd be, like, rapper or even, like, pianist or music student or, uh, you know, philosophy uh, enthusiast. Like, you wouldn't... I don't think you'd look at me and, and think those things, but I think that's almost kind of more true to the form in the sense of like, oh, it's just this guy that I have to get to know because there's levels to him and, and maybe that's the thing. Maybe he just wants to sit down and drink whiskey and talk about something philo philosophically or you, you got to get to know him before you say he's a skater or a good person or an asshole or, or this or that. To be fair, it is pretty hard to gauge Aloha shirt, jeans, and Yeezys. And, and Yeezys and no fucking hair gel and a fucking fossil watch. I just, I don't know. Like, I'm really... It's pretty hard to gauge. I'm pretty much an enigma. And it's like one of those things like... But that's the thing. Like, I don't really care. Like, I, I like I like getting dressed up and feeling nice and like, you know, feeling like I'm wearing nice clothes and shit and mm -hmm. all that. But it's never been a priority for me. I remember for my brother, it was always like he had to wear... 
he always had to match his uh, shirt with his shoes or have, he always had to have like black socks. He wouldn't wear white socks and like, you know, the way he dressed was super important to him. And like, I also remember growing up too and being like, that's fucking dumb. Like, why would you let that? Water. Yeah, it's, it's all gone. <clears throat> why would you let that define you or, or, you know, be who you are? And like, I feel like I've just always been that person of, thank you, of, I don't really care about this or that. Like, would I wear nicer clothes if I had more money? Probably. But at the end of the day, like, also probably not because even if I had them, I'd probably just dress up like, uh, when I went to Kevin's, it was like, I want to take a shower. I threw on a, a t-shirt and it was like, uh, it was the, uh, I drink and I know things shirt. You got me. You're welcome. Thank you. And it's like, no one's going to wear that. I wear dad clothes. I don't give a shit. It's not something that I've ever really paid attention to. So, but, so you don't care about your appearance. I mean, I do. I want to look good. I, you know, there's days I'm like, oh shit, I, I feel more attractive or I feel less attractive or shit like that based on what I wear and, you know, based on just how I feel for that day. But I don't go out of my way for it. I couldn't imagine. It just feels like work. It's monotonous. I'd rather sit down and have a beer and, and talk at the bar with a stranger if that stranger's got some depth to him. I like people with depth and I feel like a lot of people who put everything on their surface or just the surface kind of people and I don't like those kind of people I mean not that I don't like those kind of people I'm friends with a lot of people like that but it's just a matter of like you don't watch a TV show because it looks good you you gotta give a shit a little bit about the story you gotta know a little bit about you gotta be a little bit there's gotta be something a little deeper right nah you can watch a show just cause it looks good see and that's where I disagree substance <clears throat> I've watched shows that look like shit with shitty CGI, and I'm just like, the story is really good, but like... Can't do it. It's gotta be visually pleasing to my mm -hmm. uh, fucking fish brain eyes. See, and I'm, I'm the same way a little bit, too. Like, if it's an animated one, it has to be at least, like, a decent anime. If it's just, like, weird shit, like... If it's just... Because I've, I've seen Adventure Time and I've seen Regular Show. Both of them are similar in the sense of it's, like this normal animation and then it just gets fucking weird and rainbowy uh i like regular show because there's this overarching theme of just like a real life dude um you know trying to get the girl trying to make his boss happy always trying to do the right thing but always fucks it up with like you know some mischief or something uh adventure time's just like let's go pick an apple from a tree and adventure. it's like and the tree's like three galaxies away and you have to jump into a worm uh, a, a worm with a kangaroo pouch to teleport there and then you come out of its toenail in a third dimension and then pick the apple and then it turns into an apple pie and you're just like wow this has been a fun adventure do 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 it's quirky and and to me that's so it feels like a waste of time it feels like a feels like a shitty investment. If I invest in like a Batman movie or like an Adventure Time show, I feel like when I watch Scrubs, I feel like I learned something. I feel like I'm being told or reminded, hey, you know, uh, eat an apple a day, keep the doctor away, stay healthy, do something for your health. When I watch Adventure Time, it's just like, just let's see how crazy and weird we can get and, and just make it to where people will watch because how crazy and weird it is and it's like, to be fair, Adventure there Time... There needs to be a little more than that for me. Adventure Time was pretty much made for all the people that did drugs when we were in high school. So was, um... Regular Show. I don't... That doesn't really cater to that crowd, I don't think. Well, whatever... Whatever's the difference between Regular Show and Adventure Time... That difference... If you took the inverse <laughs> of Regular Show and Adventure Time... I would be that. I'd be in that sliver. If there was a Venn diagram, everything between there, that's me. Everything between hip hop and rap, that's me. I'm I'm that thing in the Venn diagram, the middle part. Sometimes the inverse. But today we're also drinking 805 Cerveza. <laughs> Never seen it before. It's 805 brewed with lime. Yeah, so it's just basically 805 with lime. So it's technically a new beer, but it's also a pretty safe bet. Which makes uh, it Mexican beer, I guess. Which is yeah, kind of racist. Yeah, which is so racist. Just catering to that crowd. It tastes like weed. 
The lime's pretty strong. Tastes like your fucking mouth when you smoke weed. I don't like it. Tastes like... Now it tastes like barbecue. I don't know. It's got, it does taste kind of barbecue-y. It's weird. Like a little tangy. Yeah, just like peppery. Spice. Not spicy, spicy. Like spicy heat, but like spices. White spicy. No, like spices. Like aromatic spices. Mm. It's weird. I don't know. I'll drink it. Cool. We've spent 30 minutes on me, and I feel like we've gotten nowhere. <laughs> Throw me some Unless, I mean, I, I've asked you, what what is the biggest word on your word puzzle that you think is the biggest to describe Facade. <clears throat> Facade, you fake. Yeah, because like, when I said, are you different with other people, you said, no, you're the same. I'm different. I, I give, depending on like how I'm feeling, obviously plays a big part, but depending on what group I'm with, I will give them a different personality. 220 equals 40. Yes, like... It, de- it depends. You on, can provide though. It depends on who I'm with and what we're doing, and I will give a different personality for every occasion. There's a word for that. It's um, like when you take a drug, placebo. It's the placebo effect. It's like you you just kind of go with whatever uh, vibe is there. Remember we were smoking that one time, and I was like, that just hit me so quick. I'm like instantly high, and then you hit it. You're like, oh, I'm instantly high too. No? No. Well, that happened. <laughs> sure. And then I asked you the next day, and you're just like, yeah, I don't know. It's probably just a placebo. I didn't really feel shit. And I was like, really? You you said all that? And you're like, I don't know, man. It just, it didn't hit me. And I'm still <laughs> saying, I don't know, man. <clears throat> but, yeah. But overarching, for me, I am definitely a stone wall. I, I don't like to let things out. Or in. Or in. Nope. Just You in North Korea. Yeah, I'll shoot you if you run away. <laughs> Damn, bro. Can we <laughs> talk about it? <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> we have one c- corona case. We have zero <laughs> corona cases. We have one corona case. We have zero corona cases. North Korean news. That's how you do it. Most efficient way. The ticker just goes up and down. But my, I've adopted most of my personality, I'd say, at least how I dress and how I used to grow my hair and style it was came from music. Uh, do you feel like you'd want to be some more, someone else then? Because I remember you saying, not even too long ago, you, you were like, I'm going to change my style. You started wearing, I remember I said the like hipster, business, sh- business casual. hipster boots and, uh, um, it's business casual. Those they're hipster fucking hipster boots, boots bro. They're not. They're fucking hipster boots. No. They're fucking regardless, o- boots that Oscar would wear. Reg- yeah. Regardless, the style works for you, but are you doing it because, uh, I sw- want to be somewhere I, else? Or? I wanted to switch to business cash <laughs> because of my major, major change. <laughs> to be more professional because I'm not going to walk through an office with a band t-shirt and an IE ass t-shirt and I'll still wear that underneath underneath the button you're like you're like hey (laughs) HR or torn pants like (laughs) they're comfy they're nice but I'm not going to wear it in a professional setting and trying to become a professional this obviously doesn't help yeah, no shit. Like, here's a podcast of us <laughs> being, making jokes, <clears throat> being fools. But I mean, I I would. Oh, that fucking went in. Uh, no proof. I my wardrobe isn't expanded enough to be fully business cash, but I would like to. Business cash. It's easier to say than casual. Oh, so I don't know. It's strenuous. It's two less syllables. Casual is three. Yeah, it checks out. <laughs> Mathed it right. Casual. Yep, no, we don't need a, another breakdown, Big Bird. Thanks. Casual. <laughs> I never understood that. Cause casual. Because I, I don't talk enough to open my mouth. I just casual. Casual. I feel like my name is two syllables. Alec. It is. The dictionary says one. Alec. Alec. No, I, I completely agree with you. The dictionary says I'm one syllable. <laughs> uh, break it down to phonetics. Break it down now. 
So, yeah, I mean, I've tried to change my style. Uh, I've kind of reverted back because I don't have that big of a wardrobe yet. And I have no money to spend. So, I mean, that fits me more in the metal category because they don't have any fucking money either. Mm-hmm. Just wear your jeans. Just buy jeans and then wear them till they're torn. That's that's never fucking that's happened. That's metal. I just, they always tear right in the dick. <clears throat> Stop doing the splits. Because I don't know. Go I play. In the, go play in the grass mower and slide on your knees. I've gone through like four pairs of pants, in since the pandemic oh, started. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. At work, I just I tear right through them because I sweat man. so much. It just fucks up the denim. Yeah. So I have one pair of pants. It's uh, my other black skinny jeans that I wear. There, there's no fucking cotton or de- there's no cotton or denim, and they're perfect. Uh, it's like 56%. It starts with an M. It's really weird. And then like... Material. <laughs> yeah. And then it's um, polyester and then 2% spandex. I love anything. If there's like polyester, I look for that now. So I do look for that now when I search for clothes. If I'm if I'm buying clothes, I don't do it often. I haven't bought any shit in a while. Uh, when we went to Kohl's to get you new pants? These are those. <laughs> yep. Um, I had them try on... So many different pairs of pants because there's so many different fits and depending he, he, on what he you had want. to be my mom and he had to take my hand and walk me through it and be like, this is how this fits, sweetie. This is how this fits. And I was like, I like this and this. And then we got these and I like these. Levi's ath- athletic taper. These are what these are? are the best. I don't know what those are, but oh. I had a pair of Levi's. They're skinny jeans, but they were athletic legs and they tapered off to get tighter on the ankle. They were the Best fitting jeans I ever had, and they fucking tore on me again. Of course, because of work. Sweating. Sweating. Just sweating. That's why I don't... I try not to wear jeans anymore. Well, probably a good call. At least at work. That's why I have, like, the fake dickies. Even then, those tear on me, too. I've torn them at Pizza Rev. Um, when I worked at McDonald's, I got bleach on my dickies. And it was all pink on spots. And I was like, mm-hmm. fuck, I don't want to buy new. And you just colored them in with a Sharpie? Colored them with a Sharpie. And those are the same ones I wore all the way to Pizza Ref. Same Dickies. Until until they rip ripped. Bro, I never bought new ones. And then I even got to Panda with them. And I was wearing them at Panda. And then my manager, because he's like a Hawkeye. He's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> and I was like, uh, what? He's like, do you color your pants in with Sharpie? And I was like, yeah. He's like, go buy new pants. And I was like, all right. <laughs> Did and you, and the only reason I didn't fight them was because it's like I've had those for literally like eight years. Did you never wash them? No, I washed them. I just sharpened them when when I needed to. So because I spilled bleach on them or whatever, it was probably at Pizza Rev, but I ended up or, or it doesn't matter. But I had them for like years and years, and then eventually my manager saw him, saw it, and he's like, "What the hell is this?" And I had him for so long when he told me to get new ones. I was like, it's it's totally fair for him to ask that because it's literally the oldest thing I own. own. When was the last time you bought clothes? Uh, it's been a minute, man. Like, probably with you. A year ago. Well, longer than a year ago. Yeah. It was like two at least. Probably. It was for sure before the p- pandemic. Everything happened before the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, back before the boom boom time. <laughs> Before the boom boom happened. Back before the world went dark. Yeah, I don't buy clothes a lot. I don't. That's your personality. Yeah, and, and yeah, I don't care. I'm I. There are there are clothes that I like. Like there's this jacket I'm I'm looking at on Instagram right now. I really like it, but I'm not gonna go out and buy it. It's like sixty bucks. <laughs> like oh god forbid, that's actually reasonably priced for a fucking jacket. Sure, and it's a really nice jacket, but it's like I never wear jackets. It's never cold. It's been hot. For the last two months, it's not even functional. So it's like, I, I, I love it, but it's also like, I've got three other jackets. You got me the jacket, Ryan got me a jacket, my dad got me a snow jacket. Thanks, it never snows. <laughs> it's for when you go visit him and I know, snows. once a year. <laughs> but Every Christmas. <laughs> every Christmas. But it's like, it's just that. It's like, I've got like three jackets and I'm just like, why buy another fucking jacket? Because I don't want to throw one of your guys' out. Because then I'll feel like a piece of shit friend. Well, whenever you take a vacation to somewhere that gets cold, you can wear one every day. For three days. Assuming then you I'm take fucked. a three-day vacation. <laughs> then you just cycle through them. You have one a day. Jesus. 
Yeah, man. I mean, that's just kind of who I am. I've always, I've always felt like an enigma. I don't make sense. I'm not trying to make sense, though. I'm just trying to be a good person and... Woke. I guess. Like, I, I think that's almost, like, got a negative connotation to it now. You know, I've never... Being woke? Yeah, I think so. I don't think it's net negative. I, I mean, it, it definitely got some... It could easily been, like... It could easily be spun, you know? If you're trying to be woke, you're already not woke, you know? That's the yeah, irony. Yeah, you can't try to be woke. You just that, are woke. That's the irony of it. And it's like, I don't want to I don't want to claim to be on anything. I just want to be a good person and woke. do my best, you know? But it's like, I don't know. I hate when people say woke. It's fucking stupid. Yeah, it got mainstream. Thanks, Childish. Now stay woke. It was popular before that. It was a thing before that. It wasn't popular before that. It, it got popular and then that song came out. Yeah. But that's weird too. Like words, words are weird because I hate how words get popular. And then like you hear it in a rap song and then you hear it like uh, the soldier boy. That's cap. That's cap. That's cap. I've never heard anyone say cap, but it's one of those things like you go back to some like old school hip hop and it's like they say cap all the time. It's like it's been around. It's not a secret, but it's just it's popular. And mm-hmm. that's what that's what bugs me is they're saying it cuz it's popular. They're saying it cuz it's in season, you know? It's it's fashionable this season. Yeah. It's the new slang. That fucking bugs me. Cuz people are just trying to fit in. But that's stupid. Like and it's especially like because like I'll say stuff like lit <laughs> like ironically, mm-hmm. but I do say dope all the time. And, um, for sure, for, I, yeah, I for sure say all the time, but it's just like dead ass. I don't say that very often. Sometimes I do. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing. Like it's my guy. It's you say that a lot. I've been saying my guy a lot. Um, but it's like, I don't know, man. Like it's just weird. It's, it's like, it's almost like factory fed, like. What's the new slang word in the hip hop song this month that's gonna go like on the on the wet ass pussy track with Megan the the Stallion and uh, Cardi B? It's like everyone starts saying Cap and Liddy and which is fine. I don't. I mean, it doesn't bug me, but it's like don't do it because that. <laughs> like don't don't say woke and don't try to be woke. Just be you like it it's taken me a long time to find out who i was and i feel like i'm there and i'm like i'm a nobody i'm nothing i'm an enigma i'm just trying to be a good person truth seeker do you do you think that if you keep having to say that you are nobody like if people keep asking like hey man what's up i've done that before and people left me alone it was beautiful do you think it it'll eventually lose its lose its Meaning, if you keep saying that I am no one, only if everyone starts saying it. And and, and and that's the thing; it's like the same thing of like woke can have a negative connotation. People who are woke aren't out there claiming their wokeness. You don't hear monks come up to you and be like, "I'm a monk. You should be monks with me. Monkey is the way to go." Monkey. Monkey. <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> the same thing. Um, but like, it's like that's not the way to do it. If you want to be something go be it but don't be it because it's popular don't be it because you want it to be popular don't be it because you think this like just do what you want but be a good person while you're doing it and that's what makes it cool essentially it's like be it because you be it because you be be it it because you are it like you know yeah just just stop doing things and then saying you're woke don't don't release an album and call yourself a rapper just keep rapping. I do not talk. I am just a rapper. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Don't don't assign yourself a label. How many albums do you have? One. So you can't call yourself a rapper? Correct. Mm. Don't you tell people you're a rapper? I do. But you only have one album? Correct. So didn't you just contradict yourself? I sure did. Because Oof. humans are messy, bro. Oof. I'm just trying to be a good person. Big oof. And I could I could be a good person and have a shitty rap album too at the same time. It's it's possible. It's not that bad. It's possible. 
But it's not that bad. <clears throat> thanks, man. Coming from a hardcore fan, that means a lot. It was all I listened to at the gym because it was all song, hype. all the song. Not even it's not hype at all. Eight oh eight booms. Just all the song. It gave me a good uh, time marker. So Forty five minutes. Listen to it front <laughs> to back. Mm-hmm. That's pretty short. So. Yeah. But anyway, <clears throat> I think it's just one of those things, man. Like, I don't want to put a label on it because I feel like, well, I feel like I've been labeled a lot of things my whole life, and it's things that I don't necessarily agree with. Like, people think I'm an asshole. That's what I get the most. And it's like, I don't think I'm an asshole. I don't think I'm a bad person. But if a lot of people feel that way, then that's it. But, like, at the same time, it's like, all my friends know I, I really try my best to be a good person and tell the truth and be honest and not lie. And I think those are qualities of a good person. People don't like labels, but I fucking love labels. I feel like they're so helpful. I love demographics. Demographics too, but I just... People are like, ah, like, what are we? Just understanding. What are we? That's, I mean, that's important too though, right? Because it's like, what are we? Are we a podcast? We're an internet talk show. Yeah, whatever you want to call it. Who gives a fuck? But like, we're doing it. But let, no, like a, like a girl says to a dude, like, what oh, are we? Oh, I get it. Yeah. What are we? This, oh, we're fucking. We are a couple. Throw a label on it. I don't like labels. Well, then don't fucking, like, don't, don't ask. ask. Like, and that's the thing. It's like, there's there's so many people out there like that, too, who are just like, let's not label it. And then it's like, all of a sudden, they're like, do you want to be my boyfriend? And you're like, mm, you kind of set the terms and conditions for this one, didn't you? Didn't you? Didn't you? I like labels because they make everything a lot more clear. Yeah, I mean, it's it's giving conciseness to something that is maybe not well understood. Especially, well, this is going to make me sound ignorant. Ignorant. But now that there, well, not now that there are, they've always been there, I guess. But with all the different, um, the genders. No, they're new. <laughs> Those are brand fucking new, man. <laughs> Depending on who you talk that's, to. That's, that's model Tesla 2020 status. It came out this year. They may have been there. I don't know. I have done zero research. I mean, even if you just had like a scientific approach, like it'd be like... Just, I, just let me know what you are. I know you don't like labels. I, it helps. Helps everyone. Just get over your pride. Yeah, and and here's the thing, man. I'm obviously not against it. Like, you can be... Do what you want. You can be whatever gender you want, but at, at the end of the day, like there has to be some sort of understanding between two people. How we disagreed on the word "reserved" earlier. If you if you say the word "reserved" is one thing, and I say the w- word "reserved" is another thing, we might be using it differently. But if there really is a debate about it, we can go to the book called the dictionary and be like, "This is what it means." Urban and, dictionary. No, we'd agree on a dictionary, and we'd say, "This is what this means." And if we can't agree on that, we fight. Like men with swords and it's to the death. I have more swords than you. You're going to lose. I had a dream. Oh my God. I had a dream last night, bro. This girl gave me this insane sword. It was the size of a person and you could like walk into it. Like it was like a door. That's so stupid. It was silver and it was insane. That's not functional. It was, it was like a gift. this, don't you guys have like a fucking cloud sized sword up, from, up in this motherfucker? It's from Bleach. Okay, but whatever. Yes, it's on the other side of my door. You have a sword in here that's also not functional. It was a dream. It's pretty fucking mine, functional. It'll cut you in half. So what am I, bro? Sharp. Mine was literally as tall as me, and she gave it to me, and then I saw someone walk in it, and she's like, You now have the power of this man. And I was like, What the fuck? That was dumb. How do you walk into a sword? It's a dream, bro. You're retarded. Who cares? Yeah, but that's my analytical side. I get okay? that, but if if there is a dictionary telling us, I'm, I'm very literal. Okay, I guess, but I you didn't you I'm, didn't you didn't go by the proper. Let's look up the let's look up the definition of reserved. Do it, and that will be the definition you go by for the rest of your life, since you're so fucking literal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, what do you think it is? I don't remember. It's. I, I don't say what you remember. It's it like, is. I said, what do you think it is? Reserved is like virtue. It's really hard to define. So just read the definition. It's like a sentence. And I'll say whether I agree or not. 
Self-restraining. Okay, it that's, gives you a ton. That's Here. so basic. As a young man, Sewell was rather reserved. <clears throat> Reticent, self-restrained, restrained, quiet, private, self-contained, uncommunicative, unforthcoming, undemonstrative, unsociable, formal, constrained, cool, aloof, standoffish, detached. Wow, these are getting some <laughs> very uh, vibrant spectrums. Detached, distant, distant, remote, unapproachable, unfriendly, withdrawn, guarded, secretive, media shy, close, silent, tactern, close mouthed, shy, retired, different, timid, demure, self effacing, shrinking, shrinking, okay, inhibited, introverted, hmm, unemotional, cold, chilly, frigid. Archaic, retired, rare, Olympian, antonyms, outgoing, and open. They give you a fucking slew of demonstrate uh, uh, synonyms. Synonyms. Jesus Christ. About what it means to be reserved, and that's the number one definition. So I would actually stick by I am reserved, uh, quiet, unapproachable, unoutgoing, introverted. Always got something in the back pocket. Uh, the corner table, but that's the thing. It, n- nothing here in this dictionary. This is the says anything about back pockets. Oxford Dictionary. I should have known that. I always Oxford look at fucking it. sucks. It's it's British. Merriam-Webster. You could you could choose between Oxford and Merriam and the iPhone. <laughs> the other definition is the corner table is reserved. I'm afraid, <clears throat> booked, taken, spoken for, prearranged. Charted, hired, dated, engaged, I, I, I rare, think we get that bespoken, one. antonyms, free. Always got something in the back pocket. Me. I always have something in my back pocket. Not you. That's my definition. That's like how I... But that's not the definition. So we have a different definition, but at the end of the day, you're wrong. And there is a definition to go by. It's my perception of it. But it is not the truth of it. That's how I perceive someone who. But that is does not. Reserved. Doesn't but, matter. But that doesn't make it the w- the word it means. That doesn't matter. It's how yes, my perception it of them. I can perceive literally anything about someone and still use a word to describe it. To describe it, but it doesn't make it accurate. So. So you're wrong. Matter. Yes, it does. It doesn't matter. You just said words matter because it helps make something concise and more understood. And now you're saying. That it doesn't matter. Your my perception of it does not matter because it it is the way it is. That's my perception. I can that perceive doesn't help something. anything. My perception doesn't even have to be correct. It's just how I see something. It's my interpretation. So saying the word reserved means I can interpret that any way I want, but it doesn't change the meaning at the end of the day. I'm not saying it does. So then why why is this a big deal? What what's You're your point? You're making this deal. You're doing this. No, because I'm saying you're wrong and you're saying you're not because... Because it's a perception. And that shouldn't matter. Your perception is wrong. It's my interpretation. It does not matter. It does matter. Interpretations do not matter. It does matter. No, it doesn't. And you're wrong. Moving on. No. Because we're going to be in this loop forever. And it's not favorable to anyone. Uh. All right, that's on you then. (laughs) I disagree. You come up with the next thing to talk about. I dissent. Well, I I asked you a whole bunch of questions about personality, and you didn't ask me shit. I did, and then it kept turning around, bro. And then we ended up on fucking... You asked me one question. You and you never fucking answered it. I did answer. What was the big word in your word puzzle? Word I said cloud. stonewall. That's two words. I know you didn't. I don't remember. It doesn't matter. That's my perception. Hey, that's your perception. I, and Stonewall is like Jackson, so that means you're like a fighter and you like military stuff. I said I would join the military. I know, but like w- Stonewall is like when when I hear that, it makes he was me a good think, defensive general. It, sure. makes me, it makes me think you like to fight. It makes you it makes me think you're an aggressive person. I can be. Yeah, you're like a, just you're a fighter. You just you're a warrior. You fight a lot. I can, yeah. Yeah, because you're Stonewall Jackson. You're Stonewall over that. Yeah, like really good defensive general. Yeah, that's my perception of it when you say that. You're the fucking worst. No, I'm not. You're the worst. No, it's you. No, (laughs) no you. 
So you, you, any, I like, got nothing, man. You, you don't wonder about my personality at all. You just asked me one word. How would you describe your personality? Do you want to change? It? Do you want to be someone else? I asked you that. Why haven't you? Why haven't you changed? If if you're always so about not being the same, you should be inclined to change if that's how you perceive it, and <sighs> you should change to who you want to be. Who do you want to be? And why aren't you that person already? I. Okay, so I know what I want to do in life. I want to work in an office. So does so I have the option of being changing my personality to be someone who works in an office. Uh the stereotypical boring person. Uh, it's like a nerd. Rolo. Uh bark bark bark. Uh or I can continue to do what I do and just kind of um be the most successful target worker of all the land (laughs) already there (laughs) this is a a Um, small mountain to climb but it's actually not but have my different kind of they're not different personalities but different ways i put myself out um, to portray the office worker and just stay isn't that bad stay cool i mean i don't have like a multi-personality disorder so i don't think so it sounds like you're trying to develop one. <laughs> I'm trying it to sounds be- like you're setting out to have like a Brad Pitt st- stored inside you and been like, hey, let's, uh, I'm trying let's to beat become, the crap out of each other. I'm trying to become schizophrenic. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, this sounds... What the fuck was that? <laughs> it was me saying, uh... Uh, Josh, can we speak to whatever female was just trying to come out of you just now? Please, that'd be awesome if I could no. speak to her. I have one personality, but I have many different ways of showing it. Um, yeah. You need to see a shrink, dog. <laughs> we all need a lot of things. Yeah, but you specifically just need to see someone. <sighs> no, I don't like therapy. Therapy's weak. You should go see someone. At least someone. that's the perception of it. And yeah, in my modern per- age for in, in my perception is that it's strong. So I guess it is what it is. But at the end of the day, you know... You're very spiteful. You know that? Yeah, because you're wrong. That's a big. And, you, that's a and big, you're very prideful. That's a big word I would throw in your. Go ahead, throw it in my fucking word cloud. Spiteful. That's awesome. My perception of spiteful is like a god who could spite thine enemies with thunder and shit. So I'm cool. That's smiting, not spiting. Doesn't matter. That's my perception of it. Well, that is incorrect. Sir. No, it's not. That's, that's the, my perception. That's the whole wrong ass word. Well, this is my whole fucking point to what you're saying. Mm, nah, you're wrong. Nope. I'm not wrong. Your pride, man, cometh before the downfall. That's not how it works. I'm pretty sure that's the exact saying. I don't think so. It's my perception of it. Can we end this fucking show? I'm over it. Unless you want to talk about your wardrobe changes. I already, I already did. We already talked about my business cash changes. Business cash. With my apparently hipster boots that aren't hipster at all. They're so hipster. They're not hipster. They're just regular ass boots. Nah. Do you think Oscar's boots are hipster boots? Yeah. Every single different pair of boots he wears is hipster boots. Yeah, and kind of gay. So you just think men wearing boots are gay? Yeah, cowboys, totally gay. Brokeback Mountain. Yeah, fucking gay. (laughs) That was an alright movie. (laughs) Alright. I watched it in a class. I don't remember which one. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for being here. Uh... (laughs) <laughs> we talked a lot about words today uh, that was obnoxious my name is josh thanks for hanging out with us <laughs> you're the worst